Welcome back to MTD CNC, my friends. Look what's behind me. Yazda Precision Tools. Yes, I am in Japan right now, and Yazda has been kind enough to remove the curtains ever so gently to let you know what's going on, a little bit of the secrets behind those doors that we always want to know about. So we're talking precision, we're talking hand scraping, and everything that goes into discussionably the most precise machine on the planet. So without any further ado, Kimura Sun's inside waiting for us. Let's go talk with him so that we can all learn a little bit more about what's happening at Yazda Precision Tools. Good to see you, Kimura Sun. How are you? Welcome to Yazda, Tony san. We are waiting for you. And I know the audience is ready to see what secrets you have behind these doors as well. Welcome. Well, we made it inside, and what did I promise you when we were outside? Precision, always <laughs> precision. So the very first stop is gonna be this Yazda machine here, where we're gonna test just how accurate the machine is and show you how we're doing it. So Kamura san how does this work, and what are we looking at? Yes, uh, so Yazda machine uh, is a specialty is in its uh, machining accuracy, highest in market. Uh, but uh, this is highest accuracy not only in the one place of machining room. Uh, we like to promise uh, the same few micron uh, machining accuracy through entire envelope on the table. And uh, in order to uh, support this accuracy, positioning accuracy of machines is so important. And uh, uh, our machines are very robust and meticulously hand-scraped and uh, uh, assembled with an uh, extra assembly process. However, the, uh, with the uh, structure of uh, uh, heavy components and units, machine moves a uh, micron, every single micron, precisely. And today, tony -san, I think you never experienced this, this one. I want you to feel this uh, micron feed of the machine. And while I'm doing this, I'll actually get to turn the wheel and there's a monitor over there showcasing exactly what I'm turning and showcasing the accuracy, right? Correct. Oh, let's see how this works. <laughs> and for the audience watching, this is the first time I have touched this wheel. Everything is truly authentic. And I'm starting to find when I get on camera, people like doing this to me and giving me a live first-hand action for you guys as well. So let's see how accurate and easy this is, shall we? So now Tony's uh, uh, dial the one micron, and now two micron, three micron, four micron, five micron, six micron, seven micron, eight, nine, ten. Ten micron, absolutely on the spot. Should we keep going or does that prove the point? I think it does personally. With every small click of this wheel, it only went one very accurate micron. No more, no less, but exactly perfect. How do you feel the accuracy? Uh, extremely <laughs> smooth and to be redundant, accurate. Yes. <laughs> so with that being said, if you wouldn't mind my friend Sasaki-san, with that being said, what we're doing in this video is we're actually gonna take you in reverse to show you how this is actually done. A lot of times we take you from the foundation of something and build up to the finale. Here, we're removing the curtains, just like we mentioned outside to show you how this accuracy is being done behind the scenes. So, Kamira son, let's go to the next step and take a look at the assembly area, should we? Yes, let's go. All right, Kamira son. So yep. we are now in your assembly area, and I see some massive machines to my right. I see some good sized machines to my left. Let's first start out because I don't every day see these huge horizontal machines. What's mm -hmm. being done here? Uh, yeah, we are building up a large horizontal machine uh, for the customers, and uh, these customers are mainly like uh, machine tool builders. So, in other words, uh, we are building a mother machine for mother machine. So, and, yes. a mother machine for a mother machine. Now, understanding what a mother machine is, it's any machine builder who's building their own stuff. But what we're saying is, there's a lot of these going to other machine builders to help them create the precision, accuracy, and quality that they need for their machines, right? Correct. Yeah. So, uh, our machine is like uh, this horizontal machine. 
Even if the size is larger, milling accuracy is uh, less than 10 micron, for example. Actually, achieving like a 5 micron depends on environment. So let's talk about that for a minute, if you don't mind, Kamira san Yes. I think it's sometimes a conversation we have with our audience where the smaller machines, sometimes it's easier to get that accuracy, but as they continue to grow from mm. one side to the other side, mm. that micron tolerance starts mm. to exaggerate itself and become much more difficult. Mm. But here in Utah, Kamir san mm -hmm. you always go, not with Yazda. Mm. Is that the case for this too? Correct. Yeah. Uh, in order to, uh, again, uh, even Regardless of smaller size machine or medium or large, three axis or five axis, uh, we uh, do the scraping a lot. And uh, every uh, face is necessary to create a perfect flatness or squareness or the parallels, uh, we do scraping. Uh, this is not possible to uh, just a bed grind or a, a easier process. For those of you watching right now who want to see the scraping, that is the next scene, so stay tuned for that. Now, Kamara san as we're walking around, something else I notice is how high these ceilings are everywhere. Why is that? Mm. Yeah, uh, we need to uh, stabilize the assembly temperature, uh, sorry, in Celsius, but uh, uh, less than plus minus 0 .5, uh, 0 0.5 Celsius degree. Uh, because a smaller machine, like a vertical machine, uh, we need a uh, one month assembly time, and uh, the larger machine we showed you uh, takes about uh, three months. And uh, to stabilize uh, the temperature of the assembly area, uh, we need a big volume. Big mass of the air uh, uh, keeps, uh, uh, how to say, we use only necessary area, lower area of the uh, big volume of air for the assembly. Normally, you know, the warm, warm air goes up, and uh, this is uh, uh, a margin area to let the air go. But uh, we need to have the stable uh, big volume in this lower uh, five to six meter. This is how we uh, keep the uh, environment of assembly uh, so stable. Japan has a four season, uh, spring, summer, autumn, winter, uh, changes a lot, but uh, we need to be stable. That all makes sense to me. So just to make this really simple for the audience sometimes, you know, I like to keep things simple. You're a lot smarter than I am. What we're saying is a lot of jobs are going to be 24 hours, maybe 36 hours. And so stabilizing temperature for a job is a lot easier than stabilizing the temperature for a three month time or four mm. months or two months or whatever it takes to assemble a machine. Mm. However, that temperature must be stabilized in both environments in order to have the perfection that Yazda requires. Yes, correct. It's very important. <laughs> well, I'm glad we translated that out correctly. There is somebody hand scraping right over there, which I'm excited to show you guys in the next part, in the next scene, because this is the detail. Let us remove another curtain <laughs> and take a look at the hand scraping. So, Kamira san we've now invited the audience into what looks to be some pretty cool hand scraping. So, I got to show you my dance moves. I don't, is this is this any good? Am I close oh, yeah. at all? You are very good. Yeah, well, for the first time. I, I'm not so experienced, but uh, we did good. Excellent. So, yes. there's a lot of guys around us. And speaking with you, something I think is fascinating mm -hmm. that I have to share with the audience is two things. One. This skill takes oftentimes three years for the smaller things, 10 years for the larger things, and we're talking about generations that come work for Yazda mm. because there's just so much knowledge passed down from family members at Yazda, which takes a ton of patience, doesn't it? Uh, yes, yeah, uh, hand scraping is our key skill uh, to create our machines, and uh, it's so important uh, to keep uh, skilled engineers. And uh, yeah, here is uh, Okayama, a uh, nice location with a nice climate. So people, uh, we have a culture and the environment. People can focus on every assembly process. And uh, that's why the, uh, our skilled engineer every day uh, can focus on this uh, scraping job. And some engineers are working further in the sun, that's true. I got to be honest, Kamira son, my back hurts just looking at some of these folks and I'm not sure I would have the patience to do this job. Is that why Yaz is so unique is because a lot of people don't have the patience to do this kind of work? But uh, I don't think this is a patient. Uh, they are so proud because uh, this is the base of a uh, uh, component. 
and they are creating urgency. This is a benefit for the customer. So they are at the base, in, although this is invisible place, it's assembled and the scrape face disappears visibly, but it's, it's actually visible in the customer workpiece. This is so important. They are very proud of it. I gotta say, I'm so happy Kimura Sun spun that around to talk about pride that they're giving to the customers out there. And not just about patience, because I probably don't, but maybe if I had the pride working with you guys, the patience might grow. So I'm very happy you said that. Would you like to go into some of the different art forms of the scraping? Ah, yes. So uh, here in this building is uh, specially uh, prepared for hand scraping. And uh, we are doing a scraping for the uh, mounting face of guideway, uh, the, uh, the flanges for the spindle assembly, or the, uh, the how to say, uh, fra uh, no, faces to assemble the bearing for rotary tables and so on. Yeah, we, we do all hand scraping. But hand scraping is not only one kind. Sometimes uh, uh, when the seams, things move, move very straight uh, as much as possible, we do, we do straight, but sometimes the uh, uh, axis, if you, the uh, bridge, uh, some places heavy units mounted, uh, we make a little compensation. It's not perfect to straight. So we do every kind of uh, adjustment uh, with the different skills and uh, doing the best accuracy for each faces here. Well, you guys have been doing this for many, many decades, so I'm sure there are a lot of tricks to the trade. And as we talked about before, as machines start to get bigger, it's more difficult to have that accuracy. So we head into the other scraping area yes. to take a look at some of the bigger models and how that's being done. Yeah, that's what will be interesting. Let's do that. Come on, guys. Let's Thank take you. a look. Camera son, we made it to the last room, and man, you are right. This thing did grow. You mean to tell me you're hand scraping all of this? Yes, uh, this is a, a machine bed of our largest vertical machining center. And uh, this uh, table longitudinal axis has a, a three meter, about 120 inches length. Wow, that's incredible. And the guys back here, it looks like they're painting it, but I know they're not painting it. What are they working on? Uh, they are scraping the counter face uh, of this uh, box guideways. And uh, uh, yeah, uh, we do scrape the, uh, here, the mounting face of guideway. In addition, the uh, counter surface of the uh, uh, moving unit. This, can it be one piece? This isn't one piece, is it? Uh, actually, no, but uh, with our uh, uh, precise hand scraping, uh, we can connect. So it feels like it's one piece, but it was assembled with two. That's absolutely incredible, knowing that this is what you're doing here at Yazda. One last question, because I know you're a busy guy, but you've done so well today, and thank you for having us in. Thank you. One other question is, what I've noticed is, as machines start to get bigger, they lose speed. Oftentimes, accuracy as well, but we've already discussed accuracy, but they lose mm. speed as they get bigger. What's it like with Yazda? Yeah. Uh, so uh, nowadays, uh, uh, leading edge technology of uh, manufacturing industry, the, even the piece is larger, accuracy is getting higher, like uh, automobile, uh, electronic hybrid cars, or the, uh, your daily life plastic uh, uh, bottles and containers. Uh, all the accuracy is uh, more uh, productivity demanded, and uh, more accuracy is uh, performance demanded. So even though the pieces are getting larger, accuracy of molds and components are getting higher. So our mission cannot be, uh, uh, if the machine is small and the machine gets bigger, accuracy worse, we cannot do that. Uh, in, as a top leader, leading uh, manufacturer of machining centers, we have to say, even though the small distance or medium distance, large distance like uh, this 120 inches, accuracy should be same, just a few micron. And it should be the same from one end to the other side. We're talking micron, really accurate precision. I know you're famous when it comes to dye and mold, right? But it's time to turn Yazda into a household name in all the industries around the world. Decades and decades and decades of experience. One more time, Kamira-san, thank you so much 
Thank are you very allowing much. MTD to come into Yazda and share the insights with the world. And guys, I want to show you so many more secrets, but they won't <laughs> let me. So this is what we're going to get. I hope you've enjoyed this show as much as I have today. I have chill bumps just seeing how these guys are hand scraping and learning more about it. Kimura-san, you are amazing. <laughs> Thank you one more time. Thank you very much. Thank you.